So a very good day to one and all. I'm Dr. V. Rohit Gopinath. So today we'll be discussing about a very important topic as far as general surgery is concerned. So the topic is shock and blood transfusions. So shock, now shock is the most common cause of death in a surgical patient. So understanding the basic mechanism of how shock occurs and how it can be countered is an essential component of being a good surgeon. Now, what exactly is shock? Shock is nothing but a systemic state of low tissue perfusion, which is inadequate for normal cellular respiration. That is basically the cells do not get enough amount of blood supply to carry out their normal activity. So once there is reduced blood supply, there is reduced oxygen. And because of that, what is usually an aerobic respiration becomes anaerobic at the, at the cellular level. So it is very important to identify what are the changes that occur as a result of shock. So we can divide the changes as a result of shock into two different levels. One would be the cellular level. So what happens at the cellular level? And second is at the microvascular level. So at the cellular level, when you have reduced perfusion, that is reduced blood supply, there is reduced amount of oxygen delivered to the cells. Because there is reduced oxygen to the cells, as I said earlier, what is usually an aerobic respiration becomes anaerobic. And we all know that the end product of anaerobic glycolysis is always lactic acid. So because there is lactic acid in the tissues, you find that there is metabolic acidosis, acid acidosis. So over a period of time, you find that this production of lactic acid, so this lactic acid has to be converted into substrate for uh, energy formation by means of a Cori cycle. Now, which is an ATP consuming process. So the net ATP generated is actually very, very less in anaerobic respiration. So you find that over a period of time, the glucose reserves are made use of with inadequate amount of energy production. So the glucose level decreases. Once the glucose levels decrease, what happens is that there is no substrate for energy formation and this cellular respiration ceases. Because the cellular respiration ceases, there is no energy production. So because there is no energy production, you find that the normally energy dependent sodium potassium ATPase pump, which is required for maintaining membrane integrity, especially in the organelles and the cell membrane, is lost, it's, it fails. So because of this, there is intracellular lysosomal activity, which is increased. And because of this lysosomal activity, you find that there is release of autodigestive auto enzymes. And these autodigestive enzymes lyse the cell. And what happens when the cell lyses? So what is present within the cell comes out. So the most common intracellular electrolyte would be potassium. So this potassium enters into the bloodstream. And we all know that potassium in the bloodstream is not a very good thing. It can affect the heart, it can produce a lot of systemic features. So that is at the cellular level. So what exactly happens at the microvascular level? So you find that there is tissue ischemia. So ischemia is basically a reduction in oxygen tension at the level of the tissues. So why is there an oxygen tension reduction? Because you find that the amount of blood supply to that particular tissue is affected. So to ensure net oxygen delivery, adequate net oxygen delivery, the vessels undergo vasodilatation. Once the vessels undergo vasodilatation, you find the flow across the vessel or through the vessel diminishes, the rate of flow diminishes. So there will be stasis of blood. Once stasis of blood occurs, the cellular component of blood, mainly the neutrophils and other WBCs tend to get marginalized towards the wall of the vessel and get adherent to the wall of the vessel. Addition and marginalization of these vessels, uh, these uh, cells, particularly the uh, white blood cells, especially the neutrophils, can result in their activation. When these neutrophils and other uh, inflammatory cells get activated, you have production of oxygen-derived free radicals and cytokines. So these oxygen-derived free radicals and cytokines are extremely tissue toxic. So they damage the lining of the endothelial cells. Once the endothelial cell lining is damaged, what is normally a tight uh, connection between the endothelial cells becomes loose. So there are gaps within the endothelial cells and through these gaps, the inflammatory cells enter into the surrounding tissue. Along with that enter, most of the vascular component or fluid from the intravascular component enters into the extravascular component. So since the fluid enters from the intravascular to extravascular component, the intravascular fluid levels, fluid level decreases. And more leakage of this fluid from the intravascular to extravascular components results in edema, tissue edema. 
And because of movement of inflammatory cells into the surrounding tissue, it incites an inflammatory response which causes even more surrounding tissue damage. So, these are the changes that occur at the microvascular level. Now, how does it, how does ischemia or shock affect individual organ systems? It is very important because different systems in the body respond in different ways. So, let us discuss regarding what happens with the cardiovascular system. So, a cardiovascular system, there are two important terms that we need to know about. One would be the preload, which is the amount of blood that is reaching the heart and the postload, you find that the amount of blood which is going out of the heart. Now, there is in shock, there is a decrease in preload as well as the postload. There is reduced amount of blood reaching the heart and the pump and the amount of blood leaving the heart might also be less. So, once this is less, you find that the systemic the systemic volu volume, intravascular volume decreases. When the intravascular volume is less, you find there are baroreceptors or which are some located at the carotid body and the arch of iota which get stimulated. And this stimulation of the baroreceptors result in sympathetic activity. Sympathetic activity is mainly brought about by catecholamines. So, these tend to cause tachycardia and vasoconstriction. So, what happens at the respiratory level? So, like I told you, what happens in uh, shock is that there is conversion of aerobic cellular respiration into anaerobic cellular respiration. So, an end product of anaerobic cellular respiration would be lactic acid. For the uh, energy protection to proceed, the end product has to be pyruvate. So, and the end power, if the end product of glycolysis is lactic acid, it cannot proceed further into Krebs cycle. So, this lactic acid tends to get accumulated and once it gets accumulated, the pH level decreases, drops causing acidosis. So, metabolic acidosis is one of the end products of shock. So, once metabolic acidosis comes in, the body kickstarts a response to it to maintain normal pH. So, these are compensatory responses. There are two important organs which take place, which take, uh, which play an important role in this compensatory mechanism, one is the lung, another one is the kidney. So, how does the lung act? So, lung, you find that since there is acidosis, the body tries to get rid of as much of carbon dioxide as possible. So, how does the body try to uh, get rid of the carbon dioxide? It produces hyperventilation or increases minute ventilation and also it increases the respiratory rate. Because of this, there is carbon dioxide washout and there is respiratory alkalosis sets in as a compensation to the metabolic acidosis.